LVMH stands for Moa Tennessee Louis Vuitton, a luxury goods company. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about a group that has five different operational areas. Put the share chart down, put us back on screen. I want to tell you about this. First of all, you've got the booze, right? The wines and the spirits. And there you're talking about just about every big champagne mm. brand you can think of. You can read them there, Bronwyn. Moet de Chandon, Don Perignon, Veuve Clicquot, Krug, Hennessy, Cognac, Do you carry on? Glen Morangi, Whiskey. Mm -hmm. And then we go to the fashion and leather goods. Exactly. I think we're going to get Mia to read these things as well. The fashion Louis Vuitton is the leather goods, right? So that's the stuff with the... LVMH logo on it that people will be familiar with, or the LV logo, I guess, Louis Vuitton. Those LV expensive logo, handbags. then you've got Fendi, Donna Karan, you've got Marc Jacobs, Celine Kenzo, and the list goes on and on and on. I don't think we need to expand on those. But wait, stuff there's anymore. more. So now we've done booze and we've done leather goods, but then you get on to the perfumes, right? So they've got Christian Dior, there's Guerlain, there's Dior, there's Nude Aqua de Palma, you've got watches, one of the watches that you are wearing <laughs> today, the Bulgari. Uh, and Tag Heuer in the watch environment Tag as Hoya. well, which is a huge, huge brand, more kind of sports oriented. And then the retailing, Sephora. Yeah. Yes, so hang on. So Sephora is like a multi-brand makeup store. And then in France, they've got Le Bon Marche. But then in addition to that, they've got about 4,000 branded stores. So all of those brands we mentioned before, like Bulgari for watches or like Lerva for, you know, leather goods in Spain, all of those, you add all of that, that's 4,000 additional stores across the world. And this next fact, the group is controlled by Bernard Arnois. Yep, so he's the controlling shareholder through Christian Dior. So it's a family, French family, Arno family, that controls this thing. And they have the majority stake through some kind of a pyramid structure with the entity Christian Dior as well. Market cap here, 75.3 billion euros. We've got a PE of 13 and a dividend yield of 1.8%. Do you want to go to that graph now? We can check out yes. the performance before we go to Mia. So that's a five-year chart, so that's not too tremendous. That's the listing under the code MC in the French market. So that's in euros, priced in euros, and you can see that market cap there. So I don't know what to say about that. It obviously has a good 2015. I'm not quite sure why. Going a little bit off the boil since then. How do you rate these stocks, given what we've discussed, the defensive or the uh, potential defensive nature of the LSM that well, they're I, operating in. Yeah, so I think just as another interest point, they are actually coming out with earnings tonight, so that would also be interesting. They are expecting sort of good numbers, um, net income to increase by about or to be a, around 3.8 billion, and then the net the uh, the earnings per share about seven and a half um, euro per, per share. But as you say, these companies are quite. Um, quite buoyant and in terms of the longer term view if you want to have these portfolio uh, these in your portfolio i think it's sort of a longer term view all these companies we'll see has underperformed over the last um, while mainly due to the fact that we've seen very slow growth coming from china there and other factors due to the um, you know bribery being being addressed etc so there are some factors so companies with larger exposure to china which actually Louis, Louis Vuitton with an NSC has, has less than some of the others that we're going to look at, those companies have been affected more drastically. When you say a longer term view, what are we talking about? To give us some... Well, uh, so my yes, long term yeah. view is sort of 10 years plus when it comes to equities. Um, and I think these sort, of, these sort of companies are those that, that, you know, as we talked about the longevity of the super high net worth person, this company sort of falls into that category. Would you agree with Mia mm. on that front that you're looking at a 10 year view if you want to go mm. into something like LVMH? Yeah, because I think from a macro point of view, we know that the United States' economy is doing well and that there continue to be good equity returns, house prices are high, so you've got that wealth effect so people are going to spend money on these mm. kinds of luxury goods. Europe has been a very slow recovery from the, you know, financial problems of 08, 09 and the Eurozone uncertainties later. The big problem here are emerging markets because there's a layer of people in emerging markets, particularly in the oil rich countries where there's a lot of spending, you know, in the Middle East, Dubai, those kinds of places, massive store expansion by these companies. China, we've already mentioned, yeah. both the cooling off of people's natural demand as well as this move by the Chinese Communist Party to discourage gift giving 
to public officials in particular. So what mm. people would do in order to curry favor with some local authority person who could speed up your process of factory approval or something was to give them these kinds of gifts. Luxury gifts yeah. and make sure that but the so deal gets done. That's a concern. That's yeah. a concern for sure. But interesting enough, Paul, we mentioned the U.S. and the Boeing consumer there. That has actually been a quite a disappointing area of growth for them. That's their largest exposure market-wise in terms of revenue. And they've actually not grown there as well as we thought they would. But um, when you consider sort of what they, the, the division of the business, the divisions of the business, the largest part are the, are the, um, are the, the, the um, consumer uh, sort of shops, the specialist, specialist consumer shops and, um, and the leather goods. And those aren't the ones that's being expected to grow the strongest. So we're more looking at the watches and the perfumes and sort of things that would have grown by, by giving people sort of presents over Christmas. Mm. And that's sort of what they're expecting from this last quarter now. Given the point that you made earlier that uh, LVMH has less exposure to China than some of the other stocks mm. that we're going to be chatting to in this discussion, hot or not? I'm hot on this company over the long term. Paul, well, hot or not? Yeah, I like it. I like the fact that it's got such a broad base. And I think some of the items are super high end, but some of them are also sort of mm. mass consumer items yeah. like the champagnes and so on. So. This I think it hot, continues to do well, hot. hot for me, yeah. And the share price certainly has sagged with the rest of the sector, so it looks more attractive, and that PE is not high. Double hot.